This is Ibo Area TV. Hello. Yeah, towards trying to fix Ibo land, not just for the now, but for the future. We have an idea, and we believe if it is followed, things will be better. You see, there are things you have to start doing now. There are things you need to do on time. You realize developed countries, developed cities are not just developed. They were planned. There was a time I had uh, there are massive lands to be sold in Delta State. I was so happy that uh, Ibos will have a place to establish. You know, Instead of going to where their investment might be threatened, I think uh, Delta State Asaba is home for them. But there is something I asked while doing my inquiries. I asked if there is a plan for those areas. It's not just about selling lands to people and, you know, the, um, people goes to build. There is no development plan. No. You need to work with a plan. You need to tell people where to build. We don't just need to build houses. There are several other things. Planned cities. We need to build planned cities for future sake. Now, I would like you to look into the following materials. I think it will be helpful. And uh, we would like the people concerned to act facts with it. It is very, very important. Why Anambra towns need to create parks and cemeteries? This is by Azoka Muka. As a boy growing up in Anambra State, we had no need for parks, recreational centers, and cemeteries. Every compound was a park or recreational center because it was large enough to be used as a football field or a playground. There were churches, especially Anglican and Roman Catholic churches, with primary schools with large sports pitches for football, volleyball, table tennis, races, etc. The gates of these churches were always open. Some of them did not even have full fences. People, including amateur football players, used the field within this church compound as training ground. Community sports competitions were held in these fields. In addition, community squares were available for us to play. If the community square and school compound were far, each street could be converted to a makeshift field for football or any other games. Cars were few. Upon the approach of any car or motorcycle or passerby, the game would be paused. We rode our wheels and tires on the streets and rode our bicycles on the streets and school fields. We even had wheel rolling competition and cycling competitions. There were streams to swim in. Some of the streams were even wide enough for us to play water handball in. On some Saturdays or holidays, we could play in the stream from morning to evening. To ensure that we were not punished at home for staying too long in the water, there was a plant we were told to tie together near the stream to make our parents forget to punish us. To ensure that our parents did not know that we were swimming all day, there was a liquid from a plant that we were told to drop in our eyes. Sadly, these rituals did not help much. The moment we stepped inside our homes, our parents took a look at us and knew we had been swimming all day. Some form of punishment was usually meted to us, but it was part of the fun growing up. There was a surfeit of trees for climbing. In addition to seeking fruits on the trees, we also played on same trees. Sometimes someone would fall, but nobody died or had any serious injury. Nowadays, when I am in my hometown in Newin in Anambra State, I see the limited choices my children have on the issue of play and recreation. The compounds are smaller, the streets are busier, and the church premises is either locked up or patrolled by security men. There is no large space for them to play without the fear of breaking the glass windows or getting injured and disturbing the peace. Why can't my children enjoy what I enjoyed at their age? If children in Europe, North America and Asia, which have far bigger and more cities, have places to play, why can't our children? This is why it is extremely important for the Anambra State Government, in association with communities, to start creating parks and recreational centers. 
In many states across the Federation, it is the same story. Urbanization is common upon the communities without any provision for parks. The parks that were created decades ago in some cities have been converted to other uses because parks are seen as a waste of space. Only recently, a former governor of Lagos State and current minister of power, works and housing, Watunde Fashola attempted to bring back the Lagos he knew as a youth by creating parks and planting trees. Except for Anisha, which was planned by the British and the government of eastern Nigeria, Anambra towns and villages were planned by indigenous people. Footpaths, which were in existence since time immemorial, were expanded and transformed into roads by various communities. As each individual erected his house, he created an access to that house. Little wonder Anambra roads are narrow and winding. Markets and community squares were created by each community. One big challenge which subsequent government have faced is to replant an already existing community. Do you move the people out, plan the town and bring the people back? That is impossible. It will create chaos. The best planned city are those which are planned first, which with plots of land allocated to people. But in Anambra town grew first and were later planned. That is more difficult ways of planning a city. If the residents of the towns are left to decide whether to create parks, they will not do that because many people believe that parks are a waste of space. They would rather erect a commercial house there to yield money rather than have a park that will yield no money but consume funds to maintain. Therefore, the state government should work with the local government chairman to create these parks now that there are still spaces. Each village or hamlet or group to, of five streets should have a park where people, especially children and the youths, can gather to play or relax whenever they wish to. Parks are an intrinsic part of modern community. Our ancestors created village squares as well as spaces in front of each compound for play and for ceremonies. Another missing thing in our towns and villages is the cemetery. Recently, the leader of the Hausa community in Nnewi was quoted in a Daily Trust interview complaining about the lack of cemetery for burial of their dead kinsmen. For many years, the Igwe Nnewi, His Royal Highness Kenneth Orizo III, has been stressing the need for cemeteries in Nnewi. Not surprisingly, many people think the issue is not a serious one, but this is because they do not have the foresight to see how the future will be. Many Nigerian ethnic groups, including the Igbo, believe that for a man to be buried properly, he has to be buried within the premise of his residence. In some Nigerian communities, people are buried within the rooms where they used to live. That way, the person is believed to be home. But as compounds become smaller, the reality is that soon it will no longer be healthy and convenient to bury people within their residences. With two or three graves in a compound, there will be no space for more. Furthermore, there is a need to ensure that graves and soak away pits are far away from boho so that the people don't drink water mixed with dead bodies and human wastes. In addition, the Igbo tradition of bequeathing our list a plot of land to each son is fast ending in many towns. Some people now bequeath apartments or room to their sons as the size of land owned by each person becomes smaller. Families now live in multi-level apartments. You cannot fill a compound like this with graves. Furthermore, there are visitors in every town who do not want bodies of their loved ones to be taken back to their ancestral homes when they die. These people need a place where they can pay a fee and bury their dead. Therefore, it is very important that each town or community create space for cemetery now that there is still space for such. The more it is delayed, the more difficult it is to execute. This material was by Azuka Omuka. He is stressing for the need to have recreational parks and cemeteries. That our places now has. It wasn't like before when there are a lot of space where people can play. Now buildings and several other things have taken the spaces. 
and there are no more places for recreational activities cemeteries is stressing on the need to have distance around to map out lands to have this to map out land to have recreational facilities and lands for graves that time has come when people shouldn't say he must be buried in his compound because of space development modernization thanks for listening to Igbo area tv please subscribe to our youtube channel for more updates you can also visit our facebook page and like the page you can join our facebook group Igbo area tv god bless you and bye for now